for these little spiders to be able to build this. Now interestingly enough, I was looking just now, but I don't know if you can see it, but up here at the top is a tiny little spider there. Now it could be the male, it's very difficult to see because it's against the light but it is very very small now on orb webs sometimes what you'll get is called a dewdrop spider now the dewdrop spider is a little kleptomaniac so what that means is that it will come onto this onto the web of the orb web and it sits just out of the way and it doesn't make any movement so it doesn't attract any attention to itself then what happens is a prey item comes in the orb web then starts to inject it with venom and wrap it up in silk and then it will go and often rest and wait for the venom to start kicking in and to basically liquefy that prey and while it's doing that, these little dewdrop spiders slowly come down and because of how small they are, they actually don't provide enough of a vibration on the web to trigger that individual, that orb web, to know that there's, orb web spider, to know that there's something there. So it can sneak in and feed off a little bit of those juices and then get out again before the orb web spider has even noticed, which is quite incredible. And the reason it's called a dewdrop spider is because if you see it in the light, it's got a silvery colored abdomen which reflects light like a little droplet of water and it looks like little droplets all over. The best ones to see it on is on the big orb web spiders, the, the golden orb webs. They often have a lot. I can't see nicely, like I say, with the light now. I'm going to go around just now and then I'm going to have a look just to see exactly what it is. But it could also be the male. Remember with. Right, sorry about that. The gremlins seem to have attacked. Uh, that just happens out here every now and then. But we shall get straight on it. We're still searching for elephants. Really not having any luck. We've seen, I think, about three or four different sets of elephant tracks and, her and breeding herds and dung, but not one elephant. So they definitely were here at some stage today and probably this morning, but now they are no longer around anymore, which is a bit sad. So we're just going to quickly check this western corner and see if we have any luck down here. And then if we don't, we will try and go back to the area where Shongile was seen. I don't think anybody has actually followed up on her just yet. Ah, oh, land turtle doves. There they are. Just up top there. Mr. and Mrs. Turtle Dove. There we go. Perfect. And there we go. Another one to the list. Hi guys, very happy of course, they were also on the ground but most likely not dust bathing as the hornbills like to do on these sunny afternoons but I suspect just looking for something to eat but another one for the list, I'm not sure what I'm on now, I have to get my notebook out and I've started writing some of them down but I haven't put the hornbills in yet and then we need to remember to add the turtle doves right, let's continue Oh no, and I have to do the call. Why do I say things like this? I don't know why I make these challenges so pleasant for myself. Ridiculous. Yeah. Turtle dove call. Here we go, there's the turtle dove call. I don't think I will do that. That's an easy one to do though. I'm trying to think, we, we're going to get a bit, I'm going to get a bit scared when we get some of the tough ones. I'm going to have to only choose birds that have got easy bird calls. Otherwise I'm going to find myself in a little bit of trouble. Let's see, who's going to be the next bird? Hmm. Kristen, you're wondering what the largest bird in Africa is. Well, now we've got to run through the different types of large birds. The heaviest flying bird. Da, 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 is the quarry busted. So that's the heaviest flying one. I'd say the largest bird has to be an ostrich, but of course that one can't fly, so the largest non-flying bird, ostrich, we'll go with. Penguins are just a bit too small. Then, who else? L largest eagle, martial eagle we've got. So there's quite a few different, different ones, just in various categories. But I think the most impressive has to be the Cory Busted. When it comes landing in, it genuinely sounds like there's an aeroplane about to, do, to land on a runway. It's amazing. And if you've ever heard uh, geese or ducks when they sort of swoop down, blah, 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 tongue tied, they swoop down just before they land in the water, you, sh you should have been able to have heard that noise that comes across. It's so loud on a Cory Busted. It's, it sort of hurts my ears a little bit from the videos that I've watched and I turned the volume up so loud because I've heard it's amazing. I haven't seen a Cory Busted yet, 
I'm looking and looking and looking and I'm going to Kruger often but I just keep missing them but that's one of those things out in the bushes sometimes you get birds sometimes you don't it may take a little bit longer to see others but that's okay I'm happy with that I see a something let's go and see what something I've seen they're here one we may have gotten already there's a lilac crested roller we don't want that one again we've seen that one where's this other one? Oh no wait is this a lilac crested roller? yes it is um, it looked like it may have been an African grey hornbill but we didn't get it on camera so it doesn't count we've got the Cape Glossy starlings they're there we don't need to worry about them hi birds that we've seen already mm, okay let's go down here let's try it like this way I don't think we're going to see too many spectacular birds. It'll be nice this evening to see if we can get some night jars and then of course the bron bronze wing courses, we'll try and get them out of the way. Thick knees, we'll go check again once, uh, once again around the dam a bit later and try and get a few. So we've got those hornbills and lilac breasted rollers. Come on guys, where's your friends? Where's the different bird species? All that we're seeing this afternoon. Ah, magpie shrikes and a drongo. We'll get the drongo just, actually, you all saw the drongo just zoomed across the sky. Go up a little bit. There, there they go. There are two magpie shrikes. That's another one to add to the list. And I'm going to count that drongo because we did see it. It flew across your screen as we were sort of heading, uh, zooming into these birds. So that one counts too. So I need to add a lot more to my list. But some of my favorite birds are magpie shrikes, especially because we got to see a couple from eggs and then develop into chicks. And then sadly, I don't think that the chicks made it. Remember that nest that we had on Hyena Road? That was last year's time. It was quite cool to see the naked, which you can see adult on the left and juvenile on the right. Just from the length of the tail and also look how mottled the feathers are of, of the one on the right hasn't quite got its true white colouring just yet it'll take some time before those nice adult feathers come through lovely and it's beautiful light as well this is the most magnificent day the weather is so lovely who else is here? should we get another forktail drongo? can you see that forktail drongo just over there? there we go straight in I know I've got to do the call still but we'll just we'll do them in a group there we go in case you weren't sure there's the fork, uh, forktail drongo that we're telling you about great camera work there from Hermann with the Drakensberg mountains in the background and also using the luxury facilities my goodness all that behavior in one go and one of the most elegant birds in the sky and also definitely one of the feistiest it's not often that you see other birds other than forktail drongos mobbing martial eagles or other raptors they're lovely thank you little drongo that was nice of you. We'll have to try and find your look-alike, the southern black flycatcher. But we'll keep an eye out for the southern black flycatchers. They've been around too. Now the calls. <laughs> Di, you said I'm so good at birding. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. I think good is a strong word. I'm good at finding all the common birds. <laughs> Brent is, is very much a, an avid birder. I, I just, I think it's lots of fun. Hang on, here's another one. Oh no, I don't think we'll get that one. It's okay. So now I'm going to. Do, oh, now I'm in debt. Now I'm bird called debt. Right, drongo. Drongos are hard though because drongos can mimic other bird species too, as well as other mammals. I don't know how to do a drongo call. <laughs> I don't know how to make a mechanical sound. It's so difficult. I can't do a drongo call. It's impossible. I, I refuse. I can do a magpie strike call. We need to listen to the call though let's get the call out oh and I need to also add my my birds to my list because in the moment I'm going to f forget them let's go M no not M we need to go S for Shrike okay Shrikey Shrikey okay you ready for the call gotta turn the volume on okay No, I can't do it either. That's too hard. I give up. I don't want to play this game anymore. Can we go back to, can we just spot the birds 
and then if it's an easy bird we do the bird call because I feel like Tristan's now he's avoiding this challenge for a reason and I'm gonna do all of these calls and uh, yes I don't know if I want to do those calls anymore they're not so great they're a lot more difficult than what I thought oh another one look nope, land land hoopoo actually two new birds we have got a laughing dove on the left and then that's African hoopoo that has just taken off it doesn't matter we got it it's there let's have a look at the laughing dove just down on the road there we go that's another one we need to add thank you birdie or oh, you may carry on walking up and down the road off it goes looking for something to eat probably looking for grass seeds they're all falling off at the moment oh I hear babblers let's get the babblers I can hear them they're just around the corner Herman you gotta be quick they're gonna come up on the left hand side and they these birds don't like to sit down once they've been spotted and we're gonna try and sneak oh they were in the road actually let's just see oh they just flown off we're gonna creep around the corner like this babbies where are you can you see them here we go oh oh no we're not having much luck I think that one counts Kirsten we get that one can we get the babbler because we just saw it fly off okay Kirst is allowed it the Queen has allowed us to take that bird we'll see if we can get another view but they're very shy they are remark babblers they never quite stick around for very long okay let's see nope they've gone no surprise at all that's the babblers for you they don't like to hang around for very long but a couple more birds added to the list hopefully we'll find <coughs> some more special ones in a moment but Brent has finally arrived at his destination and that destination is Chitwa Dam I'm sure Taylor had a babbler doesn't Taylor babble? No, oh, I think Taylor. I think we could classify Taylor as a babbler. Now, as you can see, how massively full Chitwa is at the moment. It is absolutely gorgeous in this late afternoon light. The only problem with being this full is the hippos are so spread out. There's one there. Hello, hippo. We can hear them, but I mean, there's it, it so much water now. The hippos are everywhere. It is always just peaceful to sit next to a lovely big water hole. You can hear the weavers weaving away, making lots of noise. And then of a hippo exhaling. Come on hippos, there we go. On cue. Now I know I've told a few of you the story before but you never know we might have some new viewers who haven't heard the Mbogush legend uh, about hippopotamus. The Mbogush are river bushmen from Botswana and I spent a lot of time with them in my teenage years and um, the guy it was a tracker I spent a lot of time with his name was LT which was basically short for Lotototototo which is also the name for a banded mongoose and his first job at 15 years old was in one of the old safari camps in Botswana and it was chasing banded mongooses out of the kitchen so uh, his real name is Letswa Letsi but um, he just became known as LT or Lotototototo and the banded mongoose or the banded mongoose chaser but according to the Mbugush legend because hippos are quite grumpy and they turn over makoros and they attack people and so they've got quite a bad reputation and and the Mbogosh legend goes, it's because you never know if a hippo is happy or not, uh, or whether they can actually tell a joke. So, because the hippos all go under the water, and tell each other the joke, and then they come up, and they all go, mm, oh, 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 oh. and they're all laughing, but you never know if they're laughing from embarrassment about how bad their jokes are, and that's why they're in a bad mood, or they're laughing just because they're not nice creatures and you don't know the joke. So that's the, the old Mbogush legend about hippopotamus.
but it's very, very quiet. Oh, sorry, I'm just listening to the radio for a second. Definitely one of the quintessential African sounds. Well, other than that, not much else happening here. Uh, Lauren's wondering, can hippo open their eyes underwater? Uh, they probably can, they, they don't do it too often. Um, it depends on the, the quality of the water they're in, Lauren. Um, there's some incredible uh, footage from a spring in Kenya that shows hippos under the water running in crystal clear water um, and they do open their eyes so yes they can but I would say in murky muddy water like we've got here uh, they probably don't no dab chick today or red knob coot Anna's wondering where is Boris hanging out these days Anna I don't know I actually think Boris might be back in the Chitwa waterhole, especially with it being so big, not so much competition with Vlad the Impaler. And apparently there's a third crocodile, which we haven't seen yet. And and, and I, I did say if we saw a, a third crocodile, whether it's a male or a female, it's going to become bullet tooth Tony. <laughs> Stunning, but anyway, I think we're going to keep moving on. I think we're going to see if we can find a little Shongololo because we've got to have a big cat on this drive. But it seems like Taylor really wants to make some more funny noises because she's got another bird. We had another bird before. We had uh, African puppets. Hang on, let's see if this one is going to sit down. There we go, they're back in the road again. Now, here we go. Quite an easy bird to spot. You can see that the, the, one of the reasons that I know that this is an African pippet is just from its behavior, the way that it wags its tail quite a bit, and then also that very white supercilium on top of its eye. I suppose you, if, you, if you're not familiar with birding terms, you could say it's its eyebrow. Just the way that it looks. It's not really its eye, eyebrow. We call it a supercilium. Now that's very easy, and it looks like they've been feeding on harvester termites. Every now and then you can see the harvesters behind them, they go and peck about over there. But very cool. African pipit, another one to add. And you can actually get them confused quite easily with the monotonous larks. But I haven't seen too many monotonous larks around here. So I suspect uh, if we go to Cheetah Plains we'll definitely see some more. But a nice bird nonetheless. And I'm actually impressed that they're not, they normally, look at this, actually, no, don't go, no, no, all three of them have flown. Normally they see you and then they're gone. They fly away very, very, very quickly before you can even get a proper look at them. But there was one that was quite relaxed. There were three of them together. So I think what had happened there is it was, it was mom and dad and most likely a juvenile uh, with them. And we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. We're seeing, it almost looks like all the birds are very much gregarious. But again, it's just a reminder, it's just, it'll be their offspring and they'll feed them for a little bit, teach them the ways of life before they go off on their own. My goodness, who's next? Who's next? Who are you? Oh, that's a hard one. It looks like a bunting of some sort. No, uh, it's too high in the tree, I think, to get. No, we won't get that one. Let's see if it lands somewhere. There's a lot of little brown jobs around at the moment. No, they've gone. It did look like a bunting though. M most likely the cinnamon breasted bunting. That's okay. I'm so sad we haven't seen elephants. I'm really, it's starting to depress me a little bit because of all the signs that we've seen. And, and you know, that's one of the easier animals to track down as an elephant, except if they cross out of your traverse and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. It's amazing, we just had them for a few days and now they're gone. Maybe they'll be back in the morning. We'll have to wait to find out. Right, next bird please, next bird. Let's get some Franklins. Let's get them off of the list. We can do Crested Franklin, we can do Natal Spurfile, and we can do Swainsons as well. That'll be fine with me. Mm. 
Now, Bobby, you're wondering if there's any robins or cardinals in South Africa. Now, we don't have a specific bird called a cardinal. However, we have cardinal woodpeckers. I think they're slightly different to the cardinals that you're talking about. So we have cardinal woodpeckers, but we've got plenty of robins. Brown scrub robins, uh, white brown scrub robin, which is quite a common one as well. We've also got bearded scrub robins, which is a very nice one to see. There's many, many birds that have got beautiful voices out here. Uh, robins though, I, we think you know what we'll have a best bet is either now at this crepuscular period or uh, first thing in the morning you'll normally hear the robins singing away and I'm, and I'm looking around, I'm trying to scan for where these birds are all going it's amazing how you go through these patches where you just don't even see one and then other times you see them quite frequently on who's just flown off, let's chase this bird down never raced after a bird before but I suppose it's a first time for everything You've asked if we if we see swallows on Juma. We do. We actually, if you ever watch the dam cam quite a bit, you'll see them coming in and skimming uh, water uh, out of the dam. We get the pearl-breasted swallows. We have started seeing lesser striped swallows again, though they've been back for a while. They're lovely. Uh, what else do we get? We get the red-breasted swallows. You get barn swallows, Europeans. Then there's lots of swifts too. So there are actually many, many, many different species of swallows and swifts that we see around here. Let's see, come on birds! It would be nice if we could start seeing things like long-billed crombecks and perhaps grey pendulum tits, some of the really small looking birds that are really tricky to get. We'll have to keep a serious eye out for those because they're so tiny. Let's see. My goodness, you see here we go, we've hit a lull again when it comes to the birds. It's just sort of a break where there's absolutely nothing through here. But we'll, we'll get past it. Surely we're going to have to get past this little this little break. Let's check up in these silver clustered leaves. And it's hard with the, all the grass on the ground because we could have passed plenty of guinea fowl, we could have had all the franklins that I was telling you about earlier and we're just missing them because they become completely drowned out in this grass. Impossible to see them. Come on! Maybe I need to just drive around sort of singing different bird tunes to lure them all out. Maybe that'll work. Hang on, here's the European roller, which we haven't got yet, just sitting on the edge of this silver cluster leaf. Here we go. Not the greatest view of one, but indeed a European roller. Sorry, another goodie to add to the list. That's nice. We're getting there slowly. You know, it will take a bit of time. I look forward to the morning safari, though. We'll definitely see a couple of good birds, especially if we head down towards... <laughs> Especially if we go down towards the Mulwati. Mm, Tristan. Tristan's now on my back. He's now sitting in final control and he's listening to my every word and now uh, he's demanding. He's so demanding today. It's unlike Tristan. Uh, a call for this bird. And we've been lucky. We've actually, we owe a lot of calls. So let's start from the beginning. Are you ready? We need to do African hoopoo. Hoop hoop. Hoop hoop. Hoop hoop. Done that one. What else did we see? Do you remember, Herman? We saw... Oh, the twin tails. Oh, African Pippa. Something along those lines. Roller again. Now I've forgotten. No, you have to listen to the roller call. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, do something else. Let's go R for roller. No, that's rock runner. No, we don't get rock runners. Let's go here. And we're looking. <laughs> Let's play it. No. This is difficult. This is a lot more difficult than what I thought. My goodness. No, that wasn't great. <laughs> I think everybody in final control is enjoying watching me myself and just embarrass myself as normal. Normally I don't I don't feel uh, in South Africa we would say scum, shy. So I'm, I'm not even normally shy about doing silly things, but now I'm regretting. And really I'm really really now regretting informing these uh, informing enforcing these rules because it's a bit bad. There is a couple of others that we saw, but I'm just not going to mention them because I can't do their I can't do their calls very well, so we'll just leave them. I think if I can do most of the calls, let's not say I have to do every single one of them, 
I think we should be lenient. It's the weekend, of course, you know. Let's just take it easy. Let's not have a stressful day here because, oh my gosh, it's a giant Mildred. Mildred? I have to get Mildred first. Mildred, don't go under my car tire. Oh, and I got sunburned today. It's very funny on my legs. Come out. No, it's a giant Mildred. Look, it's rearing up. She's about to attack. <laughs> How cool is this? Let me plug my earpiece back in though. My long cable that I could also lasso Mildred with if I wanted to. Now, why are you doing that? Should we get a two shot? There we go. We've got Mildred and a tortoise in one shot. Have you ever? This is a really, really big, I mean, you can see how massive this thing is compared to the size of my hands. No, Mildred, come here. This one is not a trained Shongololo. This is, of course, a millipede. It's not a Mildred. A Mildred is not a species, but I have given the name Mildred to all millipedes. And it's a big one. It's really cool. Oh, yes. Oh, we actually can't have the two of them too close. Thank you, Tristan, for reminding me, because Gregory eats millipedes, speaks hinge tortoises, eat them. Nom, nom, nom. Nope, that was the other way around. I don't know. Do you think... Go on, eat it. No, doesn't want to eat it. Must, Gregory, Gregory's younger brother must be full. So we will leave them. But I love them. I always have to stop and say hello to a millipede, especially when they're this size. They don't really get too much bigger than this. This is actually very, very special. You can see. Look at that. If you want to go on my hat for a little bit. All millipedes have to have a ride on my hat. Don't fall off. Careful now. This one doesn't know how to climb on hats either. No, it prefers the hands. Come on, come on, claw around. Look at that. It's like the size of my head. Oh, Mildred! Mildred, why are you jumping off? Oh, how ridiculous is that? I think she needs to go in for therapy. Don't do things like that. She doesn't seem very depressed. That was very sad. Sorry, Mildred. Should I give it a kiss to say sorry? Here we go. I'll put Mildred back now. Sorry for making you fall off. I you can guess what happened. I now have to wash my hands. Mildred got a fright. She was so excited. She expelled. She, well, there's now millipede feces all over my fingers and it doesn't smell very nice. That's, of course, their chemical defense. Mildred, I'm not very happy with you. I hope tortoise finds you and eats you up. Well, I'm going to drive away very angrily that I've got millipede millipede feces on my hand. Earpiece, you also have to go in now. Right, let's carry on. We have more elephant tracks around here. <coughs> Hopefully we'll see where these tracks go, but again they're going west or a little bit southwest. Now the female joke here, wondering if it feels weird when a millipede crawls on you. It's the most amazing feeling. I actually don't know how to describe it. It feels like the legs of Velcro. So the tiny little Velcro legs just walking all over you. It's, it's a little bit ticklish. So I think like if you were to have to put it on your leg or something, it would, it would probably, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I think it would be too ticklish for me. Uh, but it's the most, it really is the most amazing feeling. It was one of the things I'd actually do for my guests because it's a sensation that you feel once there's nothing else that feels like a millipede crawling on you. So I always used to make my guests, if they were brave enough, um, of course walk across their hands if you found a millipede that was willing. If it was one that you tried to handle and it curled up in a tight ball then I just put it down. It's obviously uh, not feeling very comfortable. That's alright. Now we're going to keep searching around here for some birds and some elephants that we haven't quite seen just yet. But I'm going to send you across to Brent who has now left Chitwood Dam and is in search of another kind of Shongololo. Yes, it's my favorite kind of Shongololo called the Shongile Shongololo. Um, and she was around here somewhere this morning. It's so, so, it's so unfortunate. This, it's so thick at the moment. I'm hoping she's going to be lying in a tree or sitting on top of Termitaria. But so far, no luck. Or maybe she's moved to one of their favorite spots, that little pan at Shabam Road. We've checked the quarry, she's not there. It is always possible that mom has caught something and came back to fetch her. Or she's gone off to play with her brother, but there's a bird, Brian. Oh no, don't fly away, little Cardinal Woodpecker. There he is. Was it a Cardinal? 
Size wise says cardinal. Was it a bearded? No, it's a cardinal. Hello, little cardinal. I don't think we're going to make it to 100, but we gave it a good bash. We did. Woodpecker with the golden light behind it. In the thick grass for an area that's completely flat. Because we've seen what those little leopards do to grass when they spend a couple of days in the area. They completely flatten it. Yeah, little Shongololo. Well, this morning, when we were looking for her, she was actually following us. When we came back, her tracks were on top of ours. Well, Ilsa says all the animals are having a siesta this afternoon. It does seem that way, doesn't it? We did have some Ellie's right at the beginning of the safari. But that's about it. This is one of their favourite little spots to hang about as well around this little water hole. I'm going to do one last little check. I've got a feeling that Queen Karula might have come back to fetch them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have a look here. Yeah, my footprints from this morning. So Hassan's tracks crossed here. But I heard when we were moving out of Shungile, I could hear some Franklin alarm calling that I'm quite sure were to do with that little troublemaker. One last look at the quarry, and then we're going to start heading towards quarantine. Remember, it is fireside chat Saturday a very sad fireside chat Bebop's leaving I blame the thumb I blame the thumb the thumb is the one look at that evil smile oh it's watching me <laughs> <laughs> and the thumb even has an evil laugh today now, of course, this isn't Brian's last drive. It's my last drive with Brian. His, he will be leaving on Wednesday. Is that correct? Yep. Wednesday morning. Wednesday, is, last Wednesday last morning is Brian's last drive. And Jamie and I shall be going on holiday. Brian, question for you. Question who... Tannis. Tannis is asking, who do I enjoy filming the most? Um, of course, Killer B number two. Well, oh, well everyone else is okay. I don't mind filming <laughs> everyone, yeah. Wait, there's someone wants to talk to me. Let's see, maybe they know where the leopards are. Jamie, Jamie. Jamie, has there been any update on Corula to the, to the south? Okay, interesting. Okay, copy, thanks very much. So, it sounds like Karula made a kill down to the south. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I think that's still at Sibambili. Um, so, it sounds like Karula ma made a kill. And um, an unknown, unrelaxed young male leopard chased her off it. And so they're not sure where she is. Uh, she ran to the north, so she could very easily be uh, on Juma somewhere. But I didn't see any tracks as I came across. But it sounds like she was quite far south when that happened. But she has, so that means she might have fetched the cubs. So hopefully they're all fine and dandy. Uh, and we're going to have to wait to see what happens in the next couple of days. I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. They're at that age now where they're fast enough and smart enough to get out of the, the way of a, a young male leopard. And of course, with Karula as your mother, you've always got to sort of step up a good start in life. Oh! 
elephants being naughty on the road. Now, Brian, what animal are you going to miss filming the most? Probably leopard cubs. Leopard cubs, yes, they are quite wonderful. And lion cubs. And lion cubs. Oh, they are the best. They are the best. Ow! <laughs> Lion cubs uh, make the most wonderful noises. James would like to know my favorite spot on our traverse. Probably the DRC camp. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well played, well played. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Uh, outside of the DRC. Oof. Zoe would like to know what was the funniest and scariest killer bee experience. We haven't had really too many scary ones. We've had some arguments with elephants. Yeah. Um, I think one of the funnier ones is when we got completely covered in dust by a, a massive elephant bull. He just went. <laughs> Camera lens, every us, the sand in your eye, in your mouth, uh, elephant snot on your nose. Scary. I have to say, I've never felt scared once on the back of this vehicle. Oh, I thanks, Brian. Oh, yeah, Brenty. That's what all the presenters can take a little pat on the back for that, because of course uh, the cameramen are quite focused on their on their job, and we can't be having scared cameramen now, can we? They don't f f f film so well. <laughs> Poor little Romeo. Yeah. But see, Sam Romeo did did have probably one of the most scary experiences anyone can have. Yeah. Okay. So the sun is setting. We're starting to move towards the quarantine. How long do we have, Brian? Oh, we got 20 minutes. Maybe we should stop in at the hyena den. I think that's a good idea. Stopping at the hyena den, have a look at the moon. <laughs> uh, Vulpine Wolf Girl says all the animals are protesting Brian's departure by not appearing on this sunset safari. Oh, poor Brian. Maybe the hyenas will play along. They like to be the opposite of everyone else. Girls bigger than boys. Boy, girls beating up boys. Pseudo penises. The like. So maybe they'll be contrary to the leopards this afternoon making an appearance. Okay, we are arriving at the hyena den. I'm feeling lucky. Nice and cool, so maybe the cubs will be out and about making a, a nuisance of themselves. I haven't seen these cubs just yet. Now, as we make our way into the hyena den, of course, tomorrow morning you have uh, we have Dave who's going to be trying out on interview. And uh, we, we might as well, should we do it, Brian? Let's get him used to the camera early. There we go. Say hi. Hey. Doesn't he look petrified, guys? <laughs> he's, 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 there we go. So he, he looks a bit scared, but be nice to him. I'm sure you'll do fine. He has a bug in his eye. So, so Dave will be trying out tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Come on, hyenas. And just in case uh, you were starting to worry, don't worry, only Brian's leaving, but none of the presenters, we are all still here. Uh, if you don't see Jamie and I for the next couple of weeks, it's because we're on a holiday, but we will be back. We are going to a good friend's wedding, and uh, we're going fishing, and uh, very exciting. At the last minute, we managed to get tickets to the Pixies. I don't know if anyone knows who the Pixies are, but if you know who the Pixies are, I'm very excited. This is uh, the, I think their first time ever in South Africa, and probably the only time they're ever going to come to South Africa, and they are one of my favorite bands, and Jamie's, so I had to 
Uh, Tristan wants me to sing a song. As we know, we all know I shouldn't sing. It is not a very pleasant experience for anyone. Um, but uh, I can name some of their more famous songs. Uh, and the hyenas are not at home, unfortunately. But uh, Monkey's Gone to Heaven. Uh, and of course I think the song that everyone probably knows is Where Is My Mind. And I think my favourite Pixie song is probably Debaser. Okay, well, we're going to keep slowly heading back towards Juma uh, and Brian's favourite place, the DRC. <laughs> While we do that, uh, let's go see what Taylor's found on Arethusa. We're still very far away and I'm driving as fast as I can because we're chasing uh, the sun at the moment. Is that The sand pack of dogs is on Arethusa, so I'm, I'm heading straight into the sighting. But I have to try and concentrate as we drive and race, obviously on many different things, and also to just make sure we go to the right road. And my phone, work, unlock. I need voice command on this thing when I'm driving, so I apologize if I don't turn and look back. I'm just trying to do too many things at once. But I know that you'll forgive me if I show you dogs. So let's see, we're not far. They were just on track south of Safari. We're about two minutes away, two, three minutes away, if they haven't gone racing somewhere else. So we just try and stay on the right path. Standing by. Okay, copy, perfect. I'm, I'm almost here at track south of Safari, off uh, the driveway. <laughs> Coffee, thanks. There they are, there they are, there they are! Right in front of us! This is so cool! I was laughing more now. He said that he could hear me and I wonder if he was talking about the sound of my voice or the car. <laughs> That's always a tough one to choose from. But here we go. This is the first time I've ever seen the sand pack before. Oh no, I lie. I've seen the sand pack many times. That was utter nonsense that I just spoke. I've watched the Toulon pack and the sand pack have a big, a big uh, box between each other, and they chased one another from the northern traverse on Sabi Sabi to uh, the to, into Lion Sands, and then back up and down again about three times before they stopped. Now I'm just going to move back a bit. Just don't want to, the dogs will walk past me, but I'd rather pull off the road if I can. They're going to come straight towards us. So we'll just pop our nose here into this driveway. Pull off a little bit. And there we go. How cool is this? Very, very nice. But the first time that I'm seeing this pack of dogs, of course, live. But let's have a look at the dogs. They're way more important than what I am at the moment. One of the most endangered animals in Africa. And you can see... This one over here is up looking for very tattered ears, leading the pack, listening out. Now if they go to the airstrip they'll have a fantastic surprise because there are plenty of impala down there. See, ears are working, waiting to hear a leaf being pulled off of a branch, a snort, a flick of a tail, anything you name it and they're walking right past us they're very relaxed but this obviously unfortunately the sighting is definitely light sensitive so as soon as it gets a bit too dark which will be most likely in the next 10 minutes or so so at least we've got a bit of time to share with them and hopefully by this time they would have found something for us and they will chase it which will be exciting i haven't seen a wild dog chase down prey in a very long time. I've seen many wild dog takedowns. I think I've seen more wild dog takedowns than I have leopard kills before. It is impressive. It's unbelievable. I'll never forget the one day I was sitting serving morning tea and coffee to my guests on one of the lodges at Bush, well at Sabi Sabi, one of the lodges called Bush Lodge, overlooking a massive open plain and I just heard an impala, big ram, snorting and he raced into the open area and I thought, mm, it was ratting season. I thought, no, that impala is going a little bit too quickly to be chasing another male. And then a flash of white, a flash of black and a bit of tan was darting behind. It was one wild dog from the two-line pack that had managed to chase down this impala. And I kid you not, it took the impala down in front of the deck. It was unbelievable. This is going, dog is going to come right here. Look at that. Look how close it is to you. 
Hello guys. They're actually not small when you see them right next to the car. I've never, I've seen, I'm have i talking nonsense now. I'm getting so excited. I've seen dogs on foot before, but uh, that was in Zambia. And they were jumping, standing on their back legs in the long grass, looking at us and barking. But it was also quite a distance. But to see them come past like this, my goodness, they're not small. They're probably much taller than my knee. But this is very, very cool. What an amazing sighting. Definitely a really, really good one to have just before the sun goes down. But here come the last of the pack, coming just off into the distance. So it's gone from not seeing much but birds. Though Brent has been on a roll today, Tristan was also fond of lots, lots of goodies. So it was bound, uh, the luck, our luck was bound to change. And well, it could not have gotten any better. And I'm sure that you all agree with me. Must be the lucky Gregory Thumb. Come on, guys. What is your plan? Now, like I said, we'll just listen to what the other guys say to see if they're going to call this a negative sighting. We should have a couple more minutes still. So, predominantly diurnal hunters, though I have seen dogs taking down impala just as the sun is setting, so much darker than this. They will hunt on full moon. Tonight is all. I don't know if it's quite full moon. I think tomorrow might be full moon because the moon was already up this evening before the sun had set. Not this year, this, this afternoon. So I think tomorrow will be the night, but there's still plenty of light that the moon will let off. There's not a cloud in the sky. So they are going to have a fantastic time. So perhaps they just got started a little bit later today because of the heat. And then of course that they know that they're going to have extra opportunities to hunt this evening. This is very cool. Hello, Sandpack. You can hear some mongoose alarming as well in the distance, some dwarf mongoose. And they will run for the hills. They'll duck down into their termite mounds. And if you do have any questions, remember this is a live interactive safari and we'd love to hear from you. So hashtag safari live with all of your questions or if you've got any beautiful screenshots. That is fine too. We'd love to see them and thank you again for sending in all the wonderful pictures, your screenshots of the thumb, of your thumbs, not the thumb. This is very cool. Lady Macbeth, you're wondering who the alpha is. I, I suspect it was that male that we first saw with the very tattered ears because he was walked walk through and typically they'll be in front of the pack and he was sort of heading it up. And then there was a female that came through afterwards. So I think that was the, the alpha pair that we'd seen. We'll try and catch up with them again. They're still just moving slowly up the road. Actually, oh, we've got Limpy Lou. We've got a limping wild dog over here. Just the one walking past the vehicle, which is not a problem. You can see a little bit of a limp. They heal very, very quickly. Now, if they were to have puppies, if they had a den site somewhere, they'd actually leave this dog at the den site to babysit all the little pups and then wait till it gets better. But because there's no den site at the moment, it sort of kind of has to go with the rest of the, the, the group. Oh my gosh, look at this one right here. It's so curious with us. Hello, have you never seen a big camera before? <laughs> it was very funny. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly gonna turn around because I want to get a, a, do a picture of these dogs. Like I said, I'm just gonna turn around quickly so we can, before we do, I have to show you something amazing before I go curse. Sorry, the moon and the wild dogs is just unbelievable. I don't know if I'll get this shot again. Look at this. I don't know if we'll be able to squeeze it in. But can we have a look? Oh, we just, just. This is so, so beautiful. So I want to get a two shot of the dogs and the moon, just because it's really, really beautiful. So if we can get the dogs in the shot as well. Okay, Chris, let's shoot, let's shoot across. It seems as though we're having a bit of a technical difficulty. We're going to go very quickly back across to Brent. There we go, a lovely gnu having a good scratch and also scent marking his patch on a quarantine. Lovely, lovely light behind him. Hopefully he's going to walk out and silhouette himself. So get ready for, with those screenshots. 
or you're just going to prove me wrong, GNU. No, let's carry on having a scratch. Okay, well, we don't want to keep you away from those incredible wild dogs. I'm jealous. They're my favorite animal. But uh, Brian, myself, James, Jamie, and Taylor will see you shortly on Fireside Chat. So we're back with the dogs again. Apologies for that earlier. We just got a little bit of technical difficulty, but we figured it all out now. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll be able to get another shot of the wild dogs walking down the road with the beautiful blue and mauve sky and the moon. The moon is hidden away at the moment, though, behind a big knob thorn, so we can't see it. Right, let's catch up to them. We're not going to be able to stay with them for too much longer. We can go another five minutes or so, but then we're going to have to head on back. And also we've got quite a far way to head home and we've still got to do the fireside chat as well. I'm going to do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dogs. Just double check. I think I've seen ten so far. My goodness, I can't believe it. The last time that I saw both of these packs of dogs, the sand pack as well as the Toulon pack, they were massive. And uh, I was chatting, I don't know what happened with the Toulon pack, there's mixed rumours, but um, some say that the pack split the Toulon pack when it was at 23, which makes sense because there were seven adults, six youngsters, juveniles from the previous year, and then uh, ten, ten young pups. So maybe that juvenile, the, the six, well, yeah, the six uh, sub-adults maybe split off, but they're only down to 13 now or 15. A friend of mine saw them the other day and she said she only counted 13 dogs. And, and then I'm trying to remember what the sand pack was at. It was definitely more than 10. It could have been at about 15 or so when I had last seen them. But this was, of course, a year and a half ago. This was quite some time. That sighting in particular that I had with the, the sand pack versus the Toulon pack. Now, Donna, you're wondering what the average lifespan of wild dogs is. So think of it very much like you, your dogs at home. They, they live for, for quite a number of years. I would say about 12 years is the average age, give or take. But life is stressful for a wild dog when you're not the top predator. Unfortunately, you can take a knock, lions, leopards, hyenas, especially if you're a wild dog on your own. A hyena could be, potentially be a threat. But in a pack like this, one hyena stands no chance. The poor hyenas get terrorized they really are down in the bottom of the food chain and then of course they're persecuted they used to be persecuted heavily by humans with these dogs coming in and taking over and killing lots and lots of stock but let's keep up with them let's uh, catch up to them again they're still looking for something they haven't seen anything yet but if they keep going they're definitely going to hit some impala I saw many, many, many of them as we were down here. There's a couple still lagging behind, but they'll catch up to the rest of the group. Oh, and it'll be a nightmare to try and follow them, even moonlight at the moment. You know what it's like off-roading in these conditions with the long grass? But they've gone into a trot, or some of them have. And the others will come up from behind in just a moment. They're not quite wasting their time. They're doing a bit of scent marking too as they go along. But it's just amazing to see how far these animals can really move. Tom, what a fun, lovely question. You've asked if the wild dogs howl at the moon. And just thinking about that, I haven't heard of, you know, dogs howling, or haven't heard dogs howling at anything for such a long time, being out in the bush. But no, they don't. Wild dogs are relatively quiet. You often hear that sort of high-pitched chitter-chatter that they do when they greet each other, or when they bring uh, food back to a den site, for instance, to the youngsters. They get very excited. They do bark, but it's quite a deep, different type of bark. Now, okay, we need to keep up with them again they're disappearing no no but I would love it if they if something were to happen and they were to howl at the moon tonight would be a very good night to light okay if they do go off-road here we're not going to follow them anymore 
I don't think we're gonna be able to off-road down into this drainage line. Let me just go up a little further. Pretty eyes. <clears throat> now you've asked if wild dogs get long with other packs of wild dogs. Now they're going away. Okay, let me just see if this one is up about, uh, just up top here. If it's not, then we're gonna call it the end of the sighting. It's now very dark little bit too dark and I also need to start heading home yep that's the end of it but it's pretty cool though they've gone down here we can follow up in the morning if oh no there's one more in the road um so no they don't uh definitely not if they're two different packs they get quite anxious with each other and like I said I had a sighting where they chased each other around quite a bit so just sitting there's a guy behind us but I don't think he realizes that there's a wild dog on the road We'll give the animals right of way and we'll see where he's going to take us. Yes, go that way. Go in there, wild dog. Now, he's, I'm just going to pull off here and we'll watch him. But if, oh, there we go. You got your, we've got the moon and the wild dog. There's the moon and the wild dog. Perfect. And just rising above the marula tree as well. Now, he's waiting for the rest. I think this is the alpha. You can see he's just got the very tattered ears. He looks worn. He's waiting for the rest of them to come running up behind him. They've gone veering off uh, elsewhere. Just to the, They went towards the Arethusa Lodge, which is a good spot. They might find a couple of antelope around there. But while we wait for him to decide which path he's going to take, no, he's going to follow us. There he goes. Bye bye boy. Oh no, no, he's gonna stand very kind right next to the car. Hey. <laughs> Look at him, he's right here. This is amazing. I could just about lean out and touch him, he's so close. Not that I'd want to touch a wild dog. I think they're very stinky creatures. And I'm glad I'm not downwind of them. It's not my favorite smell, and off he goes. He's obviously realized that the rest of the, the pack have gone down into the distance. And well, there he goes, with the sun, last of the light fading away. What an incredible sighting. What a great way to spend a Saturday. I think it was pretty cool, but we need to go now. Bye-bye, wild dogs. We'll see them soon, hopefully. Maybe we'll come check again in the morning. But let's go back this way. Now, we've again got to do uh, just a small amount of racing around. Just because I found myself quite a far away from camp, and I do need to get back in time for fireside chat actually come on dogs come on the airstrip is here right here I just want to see there's so many impala oh look down there Sh can you show them just quickly it's far away but you might be able to see their their sort of sh silhouettes moving look at all those impala Hundreds of them. Is there's the 124 that we had yesterday if you remember the game that we played they are here I don't know if those dogs have picked up on them yet. I can't see them anymore. Hang on, I can smell them. Where are they? Now I'm starting to pick up that very, very sweet smell, but maybe now I'm downwind of them. Oh, and it's a pity that we don't have the light on our side because even if they were to come here, it's going to be very, very, very tricky. Okay, wild dogs. Let me just double check. No, no, we're staying. There's a dog that's right here. We can curse. Can we do infrared with our camera? We can, hey. You, do you know how to do that, Herman? They should, Herman's going to figure it out, but I'm just thinking we can view them if we put the camera into infrared. We don't have an infrared. Oh, no, we don't. We don't have the light. Oh, okay, that's a pity. I just want to quickly check because these dogs are right here. And even if we just sit from a distance and watch it. Come this way. Andy and Julie are wondering if, like the big cats, do the wild dogs hunt at night? Not typically, but tonight the moon is almost a full moon. So it's going to give off a lot of light. So they'll most likely continue. And that's why they haven't settled down just yet. But they're going the wrong way. This male has just gone back down here again. I think he's looking for the rest of the pack. My boy, they went towards the lodge. Obviously you don't know about the buffet that's there. And he's far, there he is. But if he literally goes another 200 yards, 
Oh no, they're coming slowly. They'll pick up on these impala. Like I said, if they do run towards that area, there they go, they're making their move now, going in the right direction. We're not going to get close. We're going to have to watch from a distance. The rest of the dogs are coming. They don't do very well. We're not going to put a spotlight on them, but we can. We'll, I'll make an exception. We'll just follow them from far away, seeing as though we've got the moon. So they've got a bit of light. But no spotlights, nothing like that on these dogs. Not even the LEDs. Look, he's getting excited and he's going the right way. Let's turn around quickly. Let's make sure our vehicle's the right way. He's waited very patiently, very patient male. I don't know if I would have put up with that. This is just so exciting. Curse, is it a rot if I stay with him for a little bit? Not sure. Okay, we'll just we'll just we'll just stay with him for a little bit longer. I'm being a bit naughty, like I said, because the fireside chat is starting soon. But I just I don't know if I can leave this. This is just fantastic. Right, guys. Now go towards the windsock. Go to the right and you will spot them. I think they know. I think they know that there's something there. No, not that way. Go to the airstrip. The only problem is, is that they've, there's all the crowned lapwings I can hear yapping away now. And if those dogs go barging through there, those birds are going to give away their presence almost automatically. Here you go. You can see they're listening. Whether they've heard those young lambs making the, the sort of social sounds that they normally do is a possibility. Impala. Obviously I love the Impala too, however, I think it's important that our most, one of our most endangered species that we're so fortunate to see every now and then gets a meal too. And you'll notice and the quality is going to disappear slightly just because I can't put any more light on them and it is very, very, not very dark now. We're still able to see what's going on. I can just hear another car. Sounds like it's coming down the airstrip. Oh, the dogs are coming past us again. And we're just going to hang back now. We'll just make sure we give them the upper hand. Can you, I think, increase the ISO? There you go, I've just spotted the dogs. There's another vehicle that's just realized that they're there. I'm just sitting quietly, I'm just listening. We, there's another vehicle that's joined the sighting, but we'll all sit quietly in the dark. We won't stay with them, and now we're trapped. Now we've got wild dogs in every road, so we can't go anywhere. They're still deciding. They're here, they're here, they're behind us. There's one right next to us, but it'll be very dark to see, I think. Come on, guys, you guys are so close. You are all so close. Here we go. These guys are on the right track, on the right-hand side. Yes, yes, carry on up that road. Go. Oh, now I can smell the wild dog. That's good. Somebody's taken charge and said, right, I want to go this way. Let's have a look at them running down the road. Oh my goodness. I can't believe how close we are to these dogs. This is crazy. They're right next to us. Look at this. Hello. Me and my wild dogs. My wild dog pack. My, uh, my homies. Right here. <laughs> Not many people get to say this. Doggies, I wish you good luck on all your adventure. There goes Limpy Lou, the wild dog, off on a on a run now. They're running away. There they go. Off they go down the road. Somebody's obviously been chatting to them, saying, hey, there's Impala up this way. Well, maybe they understood me. Come on. Don't get left behind. Off you go. There's a sub-adult being chased by one of the adults. I'm still thinking. It's now getting very, very much dark, so 
I doubt we're going to follow them any further just because the light is getting really really bad and obviously the quality is disappearing we're getting worse now there we go so we'll let them go on the adventure and continue and wish them the best of the luck and hope that they get a big impala ram or maybe two isn't that wonderful what a great way to end the day okay we need to carry on zooming let's go bye doggies off you go have a lovely day right time to leave but wonderful I'm glad we stayed for a little bit longer very very cool sighting <clears throat> And I'm sure if they go that way, they're quite sneaky because they're going to miss these crowned lapwings as well. So possibly they've planned it this way. They would have heard the lapwings shouting about. Yeah, it's very dark now. <laughs> Larry, that's my favorite comment that I've received today. Larry says that it almost looked like the wild dogs had adopted me. At least somebody wants me in their life. I'm just joking, I'm being very dramatic, of course. But yes, it was quite nice to be sitting just a couple of feet away from, uh, one of, like I keep saying, the most amazing animal, the African painted wolf. It really is breathtaking being able to do what we do here at Safari Live every single day. It doesn't get much better than that. I haven't heard any snorting of the Impala just yet because I can imagine if all 124 of them give alarm calls we'll definitely hear it over the sound of the engine. I'm always, I just want to sit and watch from here and just see all of those Impala racing around. You can see them, it's very difficult, I don't think you'll be able to see them, I can just see tiny little silhouettes but they're not running, they're still relatively relaxed. Oh, sun just come up for five more minutes, five more minutes please. something very uh, well exciting to follow up on in the morning I'll definitely uh, be coming back here I think I'd like to see if they made a kill perhaps they chase something around tomorrow morning let me just call the sighting in and say that I left them I was uh, just watching those Mashlolo from a distance. They're mobile up towards the southern end of the trip. It's uh, obviously a negative lock now. Right, there we go. So you would have heard that I called lock. So typically, if you have a cheetah sighting, you have wild dog sighting, if you have young cubs, anything like that, as the sun sets, uh, you would, we would have called it a while ago, but because we weren't putting any lights on and no one was particularly taking any photos, this is where it becomes difficult when you are driving guests, is because everybody would want to snap away, they'd be using their flash, and we don't want that with diurnal animals. Not that I think it would affect the dog so much, but you, you start giving away your presence. So like what we did there, sitting completely lights off is not a problem. We're lucky we we're able to crank that up up to be able to just give you a little view of them which is exactly what we uh, did just then now we're gonna race back we're racing back to Juman. quite a far drive to do so I'm gonna have to um, well yes I'm gonna have to do some brainting I think we call it brainting don't we curse is that a thing if you brent on home you race on back we can make something like that. I think we should call it branching. Just while he's not here, then he comes back to work, then we'll pretend that he never said <laughs> never said anything. <laughs> oh, I'm teasing. Brent's now decided that he, he gives me the most the most nonsense in camp, so and I try and give it back to him, but I'm not I think it's got to do with age. I think you get wiser as you get older as Brent as Brent is now maturing in, in life. And, uh, and I'll catch up. I suppose you've got to learn from the best. So he's a good master at, at teasing. So maybe I'll pick up some, some good tips there on, on things to do. And I'll test them on my brother when I get home. Because, I mean, what else are you supposed to do to your siblings? And my mom and my dad for all the teasing that they did to me while I was growing up. Pay back. Right, let's get some more light here. Oh, I'm so excited. That was so cool. That was really, really amazing. What a highlight of the day. I was feeling a little bit sad any, uh, any animals. It was really, really amazing. What a highlight of the day. I was feeling a little bit sad that I wasn't get 
any uh, any animals. I was worried that we were just going to be on the birds and then the warthogs that we had in the pre-show. That was literally my drive. Oh, and one kudu. That was it. That is all that we had seen in about 15 birds or something silly and Mildred. So that was what a, a really, really wonderful way to actually end the afternoon, especially just before the fireside chat, which is happening just now. So we're not going to end right with me. Uh, we're going to head across in a moment to the fireside chat where James is. James is back. How happy are all of you, Mr. Henry? is back on home he got back this afternoon so he'll be there brent of course will be there jamie will be there tristan will be around i mm, just ate a bug and we go i thought i was going to get away with that today that didn't work on this road just waiting for confirmation to see when the fire side is going to be ready but they should be almost there probably everyone's doing their makeup you know trying to look good brushing the hair that type of thing brent is probably straightening his hair <laughs> giving him as many gears as I can but I'm gonna say goodbye to you just for a short while I'm gonna race on back but I'll see you shortly at the fireside chat